Grace and joy to you, family. It is Thursday afternoon, and it is time for another Manna Moment. I want to invite you guys uh, back to the study in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, and verses 16 through 24 is where we're going to be on today. So if you will grab your copy of the scriptures and come and join me in this wonderful exegetical work through the book of Acts, I think you're going to find an amazing, amazing uh, portion of scripture here that will bless you. Today I want to focus on what do you do when trouble comes to you on the mission field? What do you do, right? Um, yesterday we were talking about this idea of life being on mission with God and how in life you will have trial and tribulation and life of course we you know brings difficulties and it brings trouble so i like to spend some time there so glad you're dialing on hi sister billings we love you hi daughter jasmine good to see you welcome back welcome back welcome back acts chapter 16 if you will grab your copy of the scriptures let us go there beloved and study this passage of scripture Father God, thank you so very much for our time in the Word today and this meditation at noonday and a man a moment. Thank you for this wonderful book of Acts and what we are learning as we live on mission for you, with you, and through you in the fallen world. Would you meet us here today? Open our eyes and our ears. Help us to discern what your Spirit is saying to us as we figure out how to live on mission in a difficult and dying world and what we do when we face trouble we thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen so the scripture reads beloved now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl who was possessed with the spirit of divination she met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who come to proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged him into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates, the judges. These men being Jews, they said, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or to observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates, the judges, tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Amen. Wow, what a powerful scripture. Hi, Mother Carwell, glad you're here, Mom. Listen, when you come to this portion of scripture, Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke find themselves encountering trouble on this second missionary journey. Here it is. They find themselves encountering social injustice for the name of Christ. Hi, Mother Linda. Good to see you. When we come here, it says they were on their way to prayer in Acts chapter 16, verse 16. They were probably going back to Lydia's house where she had opened up her home for them to do ministry in. And they were going to prayer when all of a sudden a possessed young lady who brought her master's money 
by divination approached them. And this girl began to cry out on their behalf, these men are servants of the Most High God, and they come to show us the way of his salvation. She was responsible for generating a crowd of people to gather around, and she was always doing this in this marketplace. So what, have hap what would have happened is that people begin to come around because of the gift of divination, which was a satanic gift, much like palm reading, soothsaying. This is what she was doing. And when Paul saw this, the Bible says in verse 18, she did this for many days. And Paul became greatly annoyed at her. He turned to the spirit and he said to the spirit that was doing this through the young girl, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Did you catch that, beloved? Here's what happened. Spiritual warfare happened in the life of his servants. Spiritual warfare opposed them from proclaiming the word of God and doing the work of the Lord by simply going to prayer. Now, why is that powerful? That's powerful because, beloved, you and I will also encounter spiritual warfare on this journey. The evil one is going to oppose you. He's going to oppose me. He's going to do everything he can to discourage you from being a person going to prayer, being a person who believes in prayer, being a person who supports the work of the ministry and the fellowship of the believer, being someone who believes in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. There's going to be opposition. And this is what we see in the second missionary journey for our beloved brethren as they're doing the work of the Lord in the earth. So listen, beloved, let me say this with clarity for you. There's no such thing as a believer in this earth who has to live on earth without experiencing spiritual warfare. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18, that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Here's what that means. There's going to be some opposition. The evil one and all of his fallen angels are going to oppose what you and I do in the work of the Lord on earth for God. Absolutely. So here they go. They're going to prayer. They're opposed now by this young girl who is spouting all these things about the Most High God. She's not doing it to honor God. She's doing it to mock God. Paul gets annoyed and commands the evil spirit to come out of her. And the Bible says that God gave him power. And immediately he came out that same hour. Now look at this, verse 19. But when her masters saw that their hope of their prophet was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace. Did you catch it, beloved? That's right. So here you see that the evil one, once he was no longer able to use this girl who was possessed, the evil one now uses evil men who are not possessed, but they are under the influence of satanic hatred. They got so mad that Paul and Silas had commanded this evil spirit to come out of this girl's and they saw that their money was gone. In other words, they were profiting off of her possession. Let me say it another way. They were making money off of her stronghold. Mm. Doesn't that sound familiar? Yes. Evil men, evil systems, evil workers benefit off of those who are being oppressed by the underworld. And here they get mad. And because they have friends in high places, they trumped up charges on God's men, Paul and Silas. They went to the police. They went to the magistrates. And they said this in verse 20. These men being Jews, here they are, now they're racist, exceedingly trouble our city. They said, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us as Romans to receive or observe. Notice they didn't say anything about Paul and Silas delivering this girl from the oppression of the evil one. They were mad because they lost their money. And when they lost their money, they then trumped up charges. They played the race card against them, and then they had them arrested. Look at the text. Verse 21 says, 
or 22 rather, and the multitude rose up together against them. This is the community now. And the magistrate, the judges, the law enforcement official, and they tore their clothes. This was a sign of we're in opposition against you. They ripped them as if they were doing something blasphemy in their uh, Gentile culture. And these judges, when they had many, uh, commanded them, and they beat them with rods. Look at that, verse 22. They allow for them to be beat in the marketplace. And then when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them in the prison or they threw them in jail, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Did you catch that? They used the laws of the land, beloved, the laws of the land to persecute, to arrest and to oppress these believers who were simply doing what God had called them to do. What does that mean? It means for you and I that the laws of this world, they don't benefit the Christian, no matter what political party says that they, they do or they will. Listen, the laws of this land are not for the believer. No, we operate under the laws of the kingdom. And you and I will be opposed because of those higher laws, those laws of morality in which we love and live for God. People are going to hate us. They're going to come against us because we believe in setting the captives free. We believe in everybody having opportunities to live for God, to embrace God, to be one of his children, delivered from the power of the evil one. Well, the Bible goes on to say that because Paul and Silas did such a thing, they were thrown in prison. They were beat, they were ostracized, they were mocked, they were disowned, they were talked about, they were abandoned. And then the system, the magistrate, the judges, the law enforcement official had them thrown in prison. And then when they had them in prison, look at this verse 24 and I'm through. Having received such a charge, the judge did, he put them into the inner prison. This is the hold, if you and I could say that and he fastened their feet in the stocks. Now the stocks were those wooden things back in the day when they would put you on display, your head, your arms, and your head and your knees and your legs would go through these wooden devices and they would lock you in. It was another form of torture. It was torture on top of torture. It was abuse on top of abuse. It was to send them a message to not to ever preach and proclaim God's word again or set people who were bound free. Wow. How do you handle this type of trouble in society? Well, number one, you endure it. Why? Because Jesus endured the same thing. And beloved, if Jesus had to endure suffering and being shamed for the gospel, then you and I must endure it as well. There's no other way for the believer to live in this world. The Bible says in 2 Timothy that all those who live godly shall suffer persecution. Oh, beloved, you didn't need me to tell you this, but I'll stop by and tell you. Persecution is coming to the believer. Persecution is coming from the underworld, from the secular world, and it's coming from the systems of this world. So don't be, don't be alarmed. Don't be surprised. Don't allow yourself to be um, discouraged or broken when systems fail you, when people fail you, when the evil one attacks you, because it's going to happen. Now, on tomorrow when we come back, we'll look at what they do when the sufferings of this world have them in the stocks at night. Yes, they break out in worship. <laughs> Yes, because nothing can break the spirit of the child of God. Tomorrow we come back and we'll look at how to worship at midnight when all hell has broken loose in your life. Thank you for watching today. This has been a man of moment. Again, we're in Acts chapter 16. Today I read from you verses 16 through 24. Come back tomorrow and join me at noon as we look again at what happened when the believers encountered trouble in this world. Good to see you guys. Thank you for being online. Sister Cooley, Brother Todd, we love you, brother. Good to see you. Mother Caldwell, good to see all of you guys. Thank you for logging on. We thank God for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
Thank you for our family who have logged on today to study your word. We pray that you continue to minister to us and teach us how to live for you in a fallen and in a dark world. We love you, Lord. And we give you today our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our lives, that we may bring you honor, glory, and praise. Thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Bless us now as we go today and ponder these thoughts. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Thank you, family. This has been a matter moment. I'm your pastor. I can't wait to come back with you tomorrow at the same time where we again study God's word and find out what he has to say to the believer on journey with him. May the Lord bless and keep you. Thank you. Have a glorious day.